Hi, Warrior Families. Mrs. Dial coming to you today with a reopening update. Today is July 24th, 2020. I know you're all so excited to hear from me on a reopening update, but I promise that I would let you know information as I have it. And we do have a direction that we want to head for the fall. And so I want to share information with you today about that. That's the goal of this video. We know that across the country, the state and Claremont, certainly in the surrounding areas, there's a wide variety of feelings about sending kids back to school. From we, A lot of people want their kids back in school. Their kids need face-to-face -face instruction. Parents need to send their children somewhere and get them out of the house to some fear and anxiety because their parents are not comfortable with that or there may be medical conditions or extenuating circumstances. So our goal has been to create a plan that is respectful of everyone's feelings and where everyone is at this time. That is our goal always to be respectful of parents' choice and your feelings. As a school of choice, we believe parents know best. So we have been working behind the scenes with our leadership team. We have an advisory committee who's working very hard this summer to come up with a plan for what school could look like in the fall. We've talked through four different scenarios, but we think that we have a pathway forward that will hopefully be respectful and give parents what they would like to see for the fall in terms of of coming back to school. So we wanna share that with you today. And then we do need some information from you in order to move forward for planning well for the fall. So I wanna share all that information with you today. With the information we have now, we know things are changing all the time, but our intention is to be able to offer either face-to-face -face instruction with increased precautions or give parents the option to choose telelearning, and you would choose for one semester at a time with additional resources and streamlined um, expectations for telelearning. So we wanna offer those choices to our families that you can choose, which one do you feel most comfortable with? Of course, our plan and our intention is subject to change at any time as external conditions change, as new guidance emerges, as requirements are put in place, depending on what's happening externally. But this is our intention with the information that we have now. You will probably hear me say that a lot over the summer and throughout the next school year because things will be changing quickly as you all uh, are aware. But we do need information from you in, in terms of which plan will you choose for your family so that we can plan well. We need a program plan. We need to do class placements. We need to look at our staffing to make sure we have the right people in the right places. And so we need you to partner with us really well right now even in, in, in the summer, so that we can plan well for next year. We are asking you to make a choice for the semester. So you would need to consider the options and choose for just the first semester right now, August through December, which would you choose? And then in November, we'll do another survey that will allow you to make a choice for January through May. We know as things change, your feelings may change about school. So we're asking you to just choose one semester at a time. It will be very difficult for us to accommodate students moving in and out of telelearning um, throughout the semester because of the way that we'll staff things. Although we do know that when students are face-to-face -face, that there may be times when they have to self-isolate if they've had an exposure to someone who's positive. We believe the Department of Health will ask us to have that student stay home for 10 days. And so we know that we need to provide learning and education for that student during that time period. So we will have an avenue for telelearning for students who have been face-to-face but for some reason have to quarantine or self-isolate for a period of time. So that is the, the gist behind asking you to choose for the semester. In terms of telelearning, we will have some changes. Uh, the telelearning that we've planned for will look very, very different than the crisis schooling that we provided to you in quarter four when we had about a week to pull it together. And there were a lot of things changing in our world at that time. So this will look very different. We will have a contact of agreement and very clear expectations for students. We'll have a normal grading policy for telelearning, normal work expectations. We do have new resources that are more module-based that I think 
think will help streamline the instruction for our students. Anytime we're on Google Meets, there, there will be um, many lessons and there will be an instructional focus. Although we know that team, team building and community building is still important. Relationships are so central to the work that we do at Imagine South Lake. In fact, I believe that without a significant relationship, it's very difficult for learning to occur. So even though students and teachers may not be in the same classroom altogether, that will still be a focus of our work is building relationships. Anytime there is a Google Meet, that attendance would be required for students. Daily attendance is required. We will continue to use Google Classroom. That is a platform that our students are familiar with, and hopefully parents are more familiar with it now than they were before, although we can provide additional um, tutorials and things for families who need it. Of course, we wouldn't be able to accommodate any teacher requests for telelearning. And like I said, we would ask you to commit for the semester. We know that there can be extenuating services circumstances, which of course we'll treat with justice as we can. And then if you choose to learning, we're asking that you provide your own technology and internet from your home. In terms of things that we're putting in place for face-to-face -face learning, we will have increased access to hand sanitizers throughout the whole campus in every classroom and increased hand washing protocols. We are planning temperature checks prior to students boarding the bus and prior and before they their parents drive off from the car line, we'll clear them that they do not have a temperature. And we'll do staff temperature checks each day as they arrive as well. Mrs. Alt took my temperature this morning whenever I got here. So we're already putting some of those things in place. But our goal will be that once they come onto campus through our front door or they come away from the car line, that we have verified that you are fever free. We think that's an important thing to do. We know that it's part of our job to educate our students, our staff, and our families about symptoms of COVID, how to mitigate the spread, healthy hygiene habits. So we will have posters and teaching opportunities for that happening in the fall. We'll provide social distancing when feasible. There will be times on campus when it's more difficult than others. I will be honest and say I do not anticipate being able to have completely six feet apart of space in every classroom. Of course, it will depend on the number of students in each classroom and in each grade, but we will do our best to provide social distancing when feasible on our campus. Right now, face coverings would be considered optional. There will be certain times on campus when it's difficult not to social distance or there may be some commingling of classes, and we'll talk about that in a minute, when face masks would be strongly encouraged, but it would be optional. Again, that is right now as things change, that may change as well if Lake County makes a change to that policy. We'll have social distancing markers and reminders around campus and hallway movement signals to try to mitigate the spread to, to make things clear about how people should move on campus. We're staggering schedules for lunch, recess, and middle school transitions to try to prevent as much commingling between classes as we can. Again, we won't be able to prevent all of it, but we are doing our best. We will have reduced numbers of students in places like recess and Imagine Hall. And it, like I said, we will make an effort to, to minimize commingling between classes, but there are certainly times from the beginning to the ending of the day that it will be very difficult to do that, like arrival, lunch, recess, middle school transitions, and dismissal. So for that reason, face coverings would be strongly encouraged during those times at least. But again, we'll leave it up to the parents to decide what they would like to instruct their child to do for that. Face coverings would be strongly encouraged on buses. Our buses will be at capacity, and so social distancing would be very, very difficult. So we would encourage face coverings, but also know that before a child gets on the bus, we will have cleared them for a fever. Buses will be cleaned before students are on them in the morning, and then again for the afternoon, they'll be sanitized. We are going to offer morning and aftercare. We'll do our best to keep our class sizes at the same that they were last year, and we weren't. Co we will not commingle classes, but of course, parents would understand if they sign up for aftercare that there may be um, students in their aftercare class who were not in their classroom during the day. We are expecting to do our middle school sports program in accordance with Lake County. We're waiting on more details from that. We'll, of course, follow all health 
department recommendations for our staff. And then in the case that somebody does need to self-isolate or quarantine, we'll, we'll have that telelearning platform up and running for them so that we can continue the learning for our students. We know that all of our students have experienced what the Department of Education is calling a COVID slide. And so education is very, very important. And we have some work to do in accelerating learning to make up for anything that was lost in that fourth quarter. And we have an excellent plan in place for that. We're very excited about it. Those are the kind of things that teachers get excited about. And I'm a teacher at heart. And so that's definitely something that we're excited to work to accelerate learning for all of our students in the fall. So those are some of the protocols and things we would have in place that would be changing for face-to-face. -face. I think that's the minimum requirement that we have right now. And again, as things change and external circumstances change, those would be things that we would um, be able to increase the use of on our campus. So tomorrow we're going to be sending out a survey to you. It'll come through email, remind, and social media. And it is very, very important. And I ask that you would make sure that you take it by the deadline, which is July 3rd. So we're asking you to complete one survey per family. You can put all the students in your household on that one survey. If your student shares two homes, we're asking that parents coordinate together and only complete one survey. So please make sure that you coordinate that if your student shares two homes. And then you'll complete the survey by July 3rd and the survey is gonna tell us how to plan for the fall because it will let us know whether you and your students, your warriors would be choosing face-to-face -face or telelearning. We'll use the survey data to plan well. We will have more information to you coming in July as we learn more and as we get our operations and our things down, I anticipate more videos for you. Yay, I know you can't wait. Um, and more information coming to you through email, through social media, through Remind. So please make sure that you're keeping an eye on that. We are going to devote a link on our web page or website or a page on our website for reopening information. So you can always go there and see anything that we've posted. And I'll keep the reopening updates numbered similar the way that we did to the telelearning updates or the COVID updates with number one, two, three, four, so that you're kind of up to date on where we are. So that is all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. Give our warriors hugs and tell them we love them and we miss them. And we certainly hope to see them in the fall, whether it be through the computer or face to face. Um, we just want to see and serve our kids and our families the very best that we can. So that is definitely what we're working on. Thanks for watching. Thank you for doing the video. Keep an eye on that tomorrow. Coming out tomorrow. Bye.